at the Divine Mercy Shrine in Yavaniki, just outside of Krakow. And we're on our way to have Mass at the tomb of Faustina here, the source of this Divine Mercy place. And right up there, you can follow my finger, there's flowers on the wall. That's Faustina's room. So check out all those flags for the mercy upon us and on the whole world. And you too. And there goes uh, the doors to the chapel. And there's Faustina's room right there. Where them, where them uh, flowers is at. Okay. Let's see. Jesus, we put our trust in you. to draw from the font of the Spirit of John Paul. In number 1578, Jesus said to Faustine, so just put notebook, number 1578. Quote, I'm going to read it, and then I'll slow it down. The more a soul trusts, the more it will receive. I read this in actually. Souls that trust boundlessly are a <coughs> great comfort to me. I am sad when souls ask for little. The more a soul trusts, the more it will receive. Souls that trust boundlessly, souls that trust boundlessly are a great comfort to me. 
Souls that trust boundlessly are a great comfort to me. And I put a dot, dot, dot after it because I'm yanking this out of the full context, which I will give you momentarily, not to write down, but just to hear it. And of course, you can write down it. Souls that trust boundlessly are a great comfort to me, dot, dot, dot. I am sad when souls ask for little. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share from here uh, because I want Faustina to talk to you, you know? Because Jesus spoke to Faustina. Faustina told us what Jesus said. So I want to tell you what Jesus said to Faustina, essentially, you know? So we can get in that loop, you know? I mean, and as far as putting it in the context of what we've been doing, and how things have been have been going um, so far. Um, uh, John Paul's uh, great encyclical on mercy, which of course was inspired by Faustina and by the whole revelation of divine mercy, and he took Ephesians chapter uh, two verse four, where he says that uh, because of his great love for us, God is rich in mercy. And then John Paul goes through this amazing process of giving the church and the world this great, great symbol, his second of 14, God is rich in mercy. And in number 14 of that encyclical, JP says that man attains to the merciful love of God, comma, his mercy, to the extent that he himself is interiorly transformed in the spirit of that love towards his neighbor. So we attain to, so right out of the box, this mercy is just not like, oh, I need mercy, I want to get mercy, I don't want to go to hell. Good idea, I don't want to go to hell either. You know, but that's not the pure motive for the mercy. Because then it's just something that I get, I want to be using it. And it's based on fear. I'm afraid I don't want to go to hell. Give me mercy, give me mercy, give me mercy, give me mercy. Okay, good idea. But... Man attains to the merciful love of God, his mercy, and to the extent that he himself is interiorly transformed in the spirit of that love towards his neighbor. Wow. So that's taking the call. Look at when Jesus taught us how to pray. There's a kind of a, there's a, kind of a measuring going on there with something that's immeasurable, but it's something that we've got to take notice of. And we're making ourselves suspect to this formula. Right? Our Father, one and hell, be any of that kingdom come that will be done right. on earth as it is in heaven, first of all. Over here as it's over there. Over there it's perfect. Over here it's, it's completely imperfect. But yet we're praying for it to be done here as it is over there. Okay, that's the whole other story. Our Father, one and hell, be any of that kingdom that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, give us a day our daily bread, and here comes the baby. Forgive us. As we forgive. <coughs> Time out. <coughs> Dangerous. Like, what will be the effect and the impact of our heart getting big that's able to understand love, to be able to give ourselves, that is not frightened by evil nor error? Because when he said, be not afraid, and that's what it says under his name here. That's like his motto after Tortoise to us. Let's be not afraid. The biblical scholars tell us that it's over 365 times in the Bible that it says, do not be afraid. You know? So there's at least one a day. If you have a big heart that is able to understand love and give itself, that is not frightened by evil nor error, that embraces courageously its brothers and sisters. How can we embrace whether it's that character or these, these other emblems of, of nonsense and incivility and insanity that's going on in the structures of our own country, our own countries, you know, in, in our culture, in the cultures of the world? <laughs> and how could we enter into dialogue with this? And Benedict just came out with a brand new, more appropriate summer or other. He started a new pontifical council for, which is really following up on John Paul's pontificate. Benedict is doing exactly what he said he was going to do. So he was going to make the great patrimony left to us by the great Pope John Paul II be assimilated into the life of the church. Jesus said to her, I am delighted with your love. This is number 1546 in the diary in case you want to check it out. I am delighted with your love. 
Your sincere love is pleasing to my heart as the fragrance of a rosebud at morning tide before the sun has taken the dew from it. The freshness of your heart captivates me. Her heart was just so fresh that it captivated Jesus. Fresh. What's the opposite of fresh? Stale. If you wake downstairs, are you here another day today? I mean tomorrow? To a flat. Did you have the goulash with the with the potato pancakes yet? Two months ago. Don't miss it. Two months ago we were <laughs> some of the best food I've ever eaten in my life. But here's the point. I mean the, the sauce was good and vegetables in it with mushrooms and the, the meat was I think it was veal or whatever else. It was tender, it was beautiful. But the thing, the secret, they make the potato pancakes fresh from the frying pan to the plate with the sauce on it. It's fresh. You know, if you leave it in there, then it turns to mush. You know, fresh. It's like if you go to a restaurant, they have a big bowl of pasta boiling. They say, I like spaghetti. And they're just yanking spaghetti out of a big, already pre-cooked thing, and they throw it in the thing, put it on the light, and hand it out. Say, oh, that tastes delicious. You don't know what delicious is. <laughs> you want to eat pasta, you boil the water. You put it in olive oil. You put a little salt, uh, and then you put the pasta in the water. <laughs> And when the pastas are ready, because you can taste it, you know what's good. You take it out of the water, and then you put it on the dish. You make it fresh. My child, know that the greatest obstacles to holiness are discouragement and an exaggerated anxiety. These will deprive you of the ability to practice virtue. All temptations united together <laughs> That's pretty big. It's not just like all temptations, all your temptations, all the temptations of the 15 pilgrims with the two guests, that's 15, 16, 17. And even if you want to have our family and friends, all right, let's just do America and Canada. <laughs> All the temptations of America and Canada. Now, all temptations united together ought not disturb your interior peace. Not even momentarily. And why is it that sometimes faster than that we get triggered off track somehow? And somehow... We think that the reasons that we're experiencing are good enough. It's not true. No matter how good the reason is, it's never a good enough reason. So to hear something like this, and to let it penetrate into our hearts, it's, it's magnificently and majestically medicinal. It's God's medicine. All temptations united together ought not disturb your interior peace, not even momentarily. Sensitiveness and discouragement are the fruits of self-love. Talk about going to the doctor and getting diagnosed. Well, am I supposed to love myself? Yes, you are. After you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Who's the last one on the bottom? And your neighbor as yourself. So then you got to start with you, okay? Me, then the neighbor, then the Lord God with the heart, with the mind, and with the soul, and with all my strength. That's the life project.